Attention class, welcome back to video three of three. Now, I know the last video might have been pretty long. However, I wanna make sure that we give you guys two examples of how to calculate the, <coughs> how to make inferences from two pro sample proportions. Again, this is what we've already went over and discussed in class, but I wanna give you another problem. Now, this problem is me just having a little bit of fun and we're talking about what might have happened at Cheney University. So let's read it. At Cheney University, the 590 enrolled students were surveyed and asked if they felt textbooks were crucial to their success in school. 198 of the 380 enrolled females indicated that textbooks were crucial to their success. Only 91 of the 210 Male students stated the same. If using the methods of this section to test a claim that the rate of perceived textbook usefulness is greater for female students, are the requirements of a hypothesis test satisfied? And then we're gonna sit back and calculate and solve this problem like we've done before. The first thing, we need to read this paragraph again and make sure we can understand what's being told to us through the scientific notation. Again, a lot of information is being hidden in this paragraph. What is X sub one? That's the number of successes. Now you have to look at the claim, right? That we think that perceived textbook usefulness, right? So we're talking about the enrolled females and textbooks were crucial to their success, right? So 198 said they thought it was crucial to their success. And our claim is also consistent with that. So how many people are consistent as, how many individuals in sample one, which is females, what we sit back and say is a success, 198. Now we have to be key and pay attention to this because the problem could have flipped. It definitely could have flipped. Now, n sub one is the number of people who were in that first sample. Looking at this right now, we have a value of 380. So n sub one is 380. The next thing we need to do is to find out the proportion estimate in our first sample or in our first population. And we did that by collecting a sample of 380 females, right? Because we want to know about the population of females. So the data that we collected in our sample suggests that 198 divided by 380 is our estimate of the population proportion. And that value will give us a value, double check me if you want, a value of 5.521. Now, how do we get the proportion of failures? That would simply be one minus our 0.521, which gives us a value of 0.479. Let's do the same exact thing for our second sample. Our second sample is males, right? The number of confirming cases or successes is, oof, is 91. The number of people in that sample is 210. Now we're trying to estimate what's going on in the population of males, right? Our best estimate of what's going on in the population of males is what we find in our sample. And our sample shows 91 divided by 210. That proportion is 0.433. Now to get the proportion of failures, we'll just take one minus our 0.433, which gives us a value of 0.567. Now, again, that's going into this problem, making sure we understand scientific notation 
looking at these numbers carefully, I promise you, please look at these numbers carefully because they do not always line up in the way that they are right now. You must think critically to make sure that you know what the notation is and also what the problem is saying. Now, if you sit back and think about this, the original problem was really about us trying to find out whether the requirements are satisfied. Now, what are the requirements if we're using this test? This is always key because if these requirements are not satisfied, technically, we shouldn't go through and do the statistics that we've done previously. The sample proportions are from two simple random samples. Uh, seems like it to me, right? Every male and female has a chance of being picked, et cetera, et cetera. The two samples are independent. I don't think what males or females think are going to influence one another. So they are independent. And then we need to have at least five failures and at least five successes. And that can be calculated either by counting, which we have in our example right here. Those numbers are right here. However, sometimes, depending on how the information is presented, we might have to calculate that value by multiplying n times our estimate and n times our estimate for failures to determine whether it is a value greater than or equal to five. But for our problem, the way the information was presented, it is given to us as values. So we know we have five successes and at least five failures. So all three of our requirements seem to be approved. So we actually can use the statistics that we're trying to learn and talk about in this chapter. All right, so let's go back. I told you guys before we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be using the steps to hypothesis testing throughout. So let's find out what's going on here. What is the claim? The claim is, it's read it, it's in English, test the claim that the rate of perceived textbook usefulness is greater for females. Ooh, greater than females. Now, what I always tell you, when you sit back and do next, we have to sit back there and write that claim symbolically, right? So we're gonna say the proportion for, I'll do lowercase f, is greater than the proportion for males. That's writing it in um, scientific notation. Now, we always say no area left behind, and I'll show you what that looks like. So now we want to sit back and make sure we don't leave anything behind. So that would be less than equal to P sub M. Now, what do I mean by no area left behind? Let's draw this distribution. We have the two in the middle. So let's just put this value right there in the middle. We're sitting back there saying that the first requirement says that it's greater than, right? So we're gonna come close, but we're not gonna to touch that value that's dead smack in the middle. Right? And then we can double check that our two statements are accurate because we also have to claim the value that's dead smack in the middle and then make sure that we cover everything over here. And this equation over here in the green is where we bring up with the whole less than or equal to. And then the original claim is the whole aspect of being greater than, but not equal to, right? So that's the step process of identifying the null and eternal hypothesis. How do we find out which one of these is the null hypothesis? We must sit back and um, look for the one that has equality, which is this one. So this is our null. We can also tell that this is a right tail test because we're talking about greater than. 
right tail, which means our alpha of 0 0.05, we can dump all of it in this corner right here. Because since it's right tailed, we only care because it's greater for females. We only care about what's going on in this direction. So this 0 0.05 can all be dumped on this tail end of our distribution. We only have to look that way. Now, what is the pooled sample proportion? All right. Now, this is also good to sit back and have so that we um, know what these values are. X sub one, the value we get from X sub one is 198. I think I thought I was getting better with this. Plus our X sub two is our 91. N sub one is 380. And N sub two is 210. All right, so let's do our pool sample, P bar. Let's do some baby steps. The value that we are going to get for this is going to be 289 over 500. And 90. <clears throat> Next baby step, the proportion is going to be a value of 0.489. And of course, if that's P sub P bar, we can calculate Q bar by taking one from that. One minus 0.489, which gives us a value of 0.51. One. Now, just like before, and we'll see this is kind of needed, our equation is going to ask for P bar times Q bar. It's going to be in our equation twice. So I'm going to go ahead and actually calculate those values right now. 0.489 times our point five, one, one. That gives us a value of 0 0.249. We definitely want to remember that value, 0 0.249. Now, now that we have the pooled proportion, we can go ahead and start getting bold and start calculating the equation. Now remember, and our, for our z-score, remember this equals zero, which is stated right here and also in the previous. Also remember this value and this value both equal our 0.249, which we have done. All right, so let's figure out these values. And let's say, let's go down to a value of black. Now our first <coughs> proportion is the value of 0.521. You'll remember we did this earlier minus our value of 0.433 over. So our Z equals, and again, we're following this equation. That equals zero. We have our square root right here. Our values here, we already calculated. So I'm gonna write them there. 0.249, then I'm also gonna have it again, 
are 0.249 and they're divided by the values of n. Our first value of n is 380, which we can still see above. And our second value of n is 210, which we can also see above. Now, I always encourage baby steps. The first baby steps would be to calculate this value. The next baby step would be to calculate both of these. And I'm gonna do them all in one step just so we can save some time. I know you guys are probably <coughs> tired of paying attention by now. All right, so our post first value is 0.272. And the other value is a lot of zeros, 0 0.0006. Five, five plus point zero zero one one eight. And again, these values are corresponding to the same values in red, the same value in blue, and the same value in yellow. All right, so what's our next baby step? Our next baby step in my mind would be to do the denominator. Denominator right here, I'm gonna add these two values together, which gives us a value of 0 0.00, 0 that's a bad zero, zero, one, eight, five. And again, that's over our point two, seven, two. Our next baby step would be to take the square root of that. So that's 0 0.272 over 0 0.0428. Our next baby step is gonna give us our value. There's a value of six, Point three five five equals our value of Z. A lot of work to get there, but that's what we have to do. Same thing, we can do the same exact thing. We write our distribution. Right dead smack in the middle is where our difference is, or we can say our P hat minus P hat, right there in the middle. Now, we talked about our claim earlier, but we know from doing this a little bit, value of one, value of two standard deviations, we're gonna sit back and have it be significant starting from around here, around 1.64, because that's when you look at the Z-score, you're gonna find it. That's how what happens when we put our <laughs> 0 0.05 alpha in one tail. You can look it up in the book to find out what it is. I believe it's a value of 1.64. If I'm wrong, I'm so sorry, but I'm pretty sure I'm accurate. Now, comparing these, this 6.355 is much more extreme than our critical value. One, two, three will be here, four will be there, five will be there, six will be there, and then it's like a third. So our Z-score is somewhere out there. As you can see, that's definitely in the critical region. So this difference between females saying that they prefer textbooks, the proportion is definitely greater than the proportion of males who say that they um, think that textbooks are essential. What is the critical value? We already found it um, again, but what I would tell you to do is, and it's the technique, you can do a couple of things. I'll write this in here. I think this would be really good. You can either look on the negative 
z-score table and look for the value closest to 0 0.05000. Zero, zero. And I believe that value will be a negative 1.645 technically, but our table doesn't allow us to go there. Now, the other approach is you can look on the positive. I don't know where that came from, hold on. You can look on the positive z-score table. And since we're looking on a positive z-score table, we're looking for the value that leaves 5% in this tail end, 0 0.05. So if 0 0.05 is here, that means that on the other side of this is our 0.95. So we can actually go to the table and look for the z-score that's closest to 0 0.9500, again, without going over. And when you find that value, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a value of positive 1.64. And the reason why it's gonna be the positive value is because don't forget this guys, this distribution is symmetrical. Right, that smack in the middle is where you drop off 50% above, 50% below, I think I said that wrong. But again, the same amount of standard deviations above and below will have the same amount of area in the tail end. So there's two ways you can sit back there and find out what the critical value is if we set alpha at 0 0.05. We can go to the negative z-score, and look for value of 0 0.0500, close as we can get without going over. That should be a negative 1.64 or negative 1.65, depending on how you do it. Or you can sit back there and take the opposite approach, which is one minus the 0 0.05 and find that value in the side of the book without going over. And that should give you a value of 1.64, which is our critical value. And since the value that we calculated, which was 6.33, I believe, since 6.33 is greater than our critical value of 1.64, we will reject the null hypothesis. We will reject the null hypothesis. All right, thank you guys very much.